What's up, YouTube? It's time for the advent of code. The advent of code. Day number nine. Day number nine. So we're continuing on where we left off. Day number nine. In this one, the problem's relatively simple to start with. You get a bunch of numbers here. You want to find the low spots or the anchor points is what I like to call them. That's everywhere where every number surrounding that number is larger than this number. So, for example, right here, you'll see the one. All these numbers are bigger. So this one is an anchor point. So that's all we have to do. Part one's pretty simple. Your example is going to look something like that. Just copy paste it in. So we do, as always, include the stir, map it to lines. And basically what we do is we take each char, right? So that's each character right here, one at a time. Turn it into a digit collect them into a vec, and then get a vec of vex. So basically, we've just got sort of similar to a matrix, right? We get the rows and the column sizes, not guaranteed to be the same. And then we want to find the anchors. So we uh, iterate over each row and line in the puzzle. I've got myself a little helper function here, this cardinal directions here, which pretty much just checks whether each of these are a legitimate location uh, that could be within these bounds. And if it's not, then it won't push it to these directions. So this just helps me not get uh, like negative one or things that are too big. You don't have to do this. You can write out that logic yourself, but that's totally fine. So we just uh, take the cardinal directions and we say, hey, are all of these, right? So this is a, this is a basically like a lambda here, right? And we have some x, y pair We're asking, are all of the values for each x, y, so right puzzle x, y, greater than the current value that we have? If so, push this in as an anchor. Okay, so I think that's a pretty nice way to do it. All is a really nice kind of thing for this situation. You don't have to write a bunch of extra loops. You can just sort of write your condition and say, does it always match? Once you do that, you've actually got part one. I mean, except they want you to like do some weird multiplication with all of them. Doesn't really matter. You just add one to all these. Okie dokie, we're all set. But that's part one. For part two, what they're looking for you to do is find all of what they call the basins. So for the basins, what you're looking to do is you're looking to find all the spots starting from an anchor. You're looking to find all the spots uh, that are still lower than nine, basically. Okay. Uh, it's actually not lower than nine. It's just lower than the number surrounding them. But I think it ends up being less than nine. Uh, and so when you do that, you're going to get each of these basins. You're guaranteed that each of the locations will only be part of one basin. We're going to abuse that fact in part two, okay? We're going to use that uh, quite to our advantage, okay? And so then once we get all of the basins, what they're asking us to do is, okay, find the three largest basins and multiply them together. So that's all you have to do here. We could have done something a bit trickier, like had the largest three things stored. I didn't super care. I just put them into a vec, and you'll see why at the end. But uh, I just put them inside of a vector to keep track of the size of the basins. And then you always got to make sure that you keep track of whether you've counted things or not so you don't accidentally infinite loop. In this case, it shouldn't matter because we're guaranteed that each one will only be uh, in one basin. But that's okay. We, we will do this anyways. So we actually use our anchors for part one. That's why the solution's in one problem still. We grab the anchors that we got in part one, which are all the low points. We check for each of these uh, anchor X, anchor Ys, we insert those into sort of like our count and say, okay, well, we've checked this spot. And so that means we don't need to check it again. And then we do the cardinal directions trick again. This time, instead of checking if the value is different every time, what we do is we add this to basically a, a map of all of the different places that we want to visit. It's actually more of a stack than a map, really, because what we're going to do is we're just going to put these a, B, and anchor val, which is sort of like X, Y, and the anchor val, into visit, collect those up. And then while we're visiting this, so basically, like, as long as we have some place left to visit, what we're going to do here is we're going to grab that last value. Grab It doesn't really matter what value you pick. There's no order in this one, so it's just whatever order they got placed on it later. You will want to think about order, though. But that's okay. In this case, this kind of search problem doesn't matter about order. We can check whether we visited this before. If so, skip. And then we can do the check again to make sure, okay, is this less than all the values around it? And is it not equal to 9? If so, we add it to the basin size. 
and then we add all of the locations around that spot. Same strategy we just did down here, basically cardinal directions into map, and then we insert that we visited this spot already. And so, just so that you can picture how that looks, it's sort of like if we start at this zero spot, what we'll do is we'll add this one and this one to the to visit, okay? And then when we check here, we'll say, oh, this one still works and this one still works. Okay, so we'll add those to visit and we'll add this one to ones that we've already counted. Okay, so that's the ones that we've already counted. So then when we go here and we're checking the spots around here, each of these four locations, it's going to say, oh, we've already visited this one. Don't count this one again. That's important. You don't want to double count the numbers or start adding spots again around here. You've actually already counted those, right? So you've already counted these. And then you'd see nine and say, okay, I can skip nine, I can skip, and then one. You'll say, actually, I, I've, uh, I'll i add this to the things to check. And then you'll check this one. And then later when you get all the way back to your two visits, it'll say, already counted this one, don't need to check anymore. So that's sort of how that trick works of basically putting these onto this two visit stack, looping while you still have things in two visit and then basically going down in this cardinal direction. This is nice because it doesn't have any sort of recursive calls. This is just all in the same stack, which is really nice for performance purposes. Um, and then you're like, okay, how do we solve the problem, TJ? Well, we add one to the basin size here, and then if the basin size is greater than zero, then we just push this basin size onto here. And at the end, we can use some iterator magic to say, hey, okay, I wanna iterate over these. I want them to be sorted. I want it to be reversed, so I have the biggest first. I want to only take three of them because that's what they said to do for the problem. And then I want to take the product of these. You run this and then you get the answer. That is day nine. Thanks for hanging out with me. Sorry for not posting anything. Well, I'm going to try and get back to it. Thanks, everybody. See you.